Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Shore's math class. Uh, the title of today's lesson, Do the Math on COVID-19. And I was inspired to create this lesson for a couple of reasons. First one is, as you can tell, I'm not in an actual classroom because as many school districts around the country, mine has been shut down. And I also live in California, so we are under a stay-at-home directive. So like many Americans, I'm consuming news about the coronavirus. And there are two articles in particular that inspired me to do this lesson for you all. Here's the, the first one. It's the chrono, title, The Coronavirus Could Kill Millions of Americans. Do the math, this specialist says. And that specialist is Dr. Kathleen Newsel out of the University of Maryland. <clears throat> and you see that's her on the right. And you see the co-host of the show on the left. And he asked her, do you really think that a million people could die from this virus? And her comment without any hesitation was, I would not be surprised. And he was like saying, how could that happen? And it wasn't because he was being rude. He was just trying to wrap his head around this. How do you go from at the time of this interview, 9,000 cases in the United States to over a million? How are we going to get from 150 deaths to over a million? He was really having a tough time, which I think a lot of Americans are having a tough time wrapping their heads around these numbers. Her response was, we have 350 million people in the United States, and you do the math. <clears throat> she gave some more stats, and then she went on to say, then you can do the math, and then you can get there. Now, because of the limitations of the video interview, she didn't actually do the math with the host, but I thought we could do that for him as well as for uh, all of you. And so I want to say, I was also reading another article at the time, is poor math literacy making it harder for people to understand COVID-19 coronavirus. This was in Forbes magazine, and the author quotes an economist, Dr. Julie Pierce, who wrote, the longer the crisis goes on and the more comments I read, the more I wonder how many people who resisted learning math in high school because they would quote unquote, never use it in real life, are now struggling with reading graphs and understanding trajectories and logical outcomes. So it is for these two uh, people that I say we have two objectives for our lesson here. One is let's do the math and answer the question for the host of that show and say, how do we get from the current numbers we have now to over a million? And let's answer the call of our economist who says that we need to be more math literate, more numerate. And so we're going to discuss, I'm going to discuss for you what this term exponential growth means that you hear so often in these coronavirus news stories. So let's get after it. Let me share with you first off where I pulled the data. Um, I went to worldometers.com and you can see this. This is the total number of cases in the United States. And if you go to the website, this is actually an interactive graph. And if you hover over the node, it will tell you the number of total cases at that point in time in the United States. And so if I hovered over February 15th, it would tell me there was only 15 cases. And it stayed kind of like that for a while. And you can see it kind of was flatlined. And then all of a sudden it starts taking off. And it forms when you plot these points, what we see is an exponential curve. So we're going to talk about what that exponential curve means. Um, but I also want to tell you, I went over each of these nodes and pulled the data. Here's March 19th, the day of that interview. Uh, March 18th was the data that they had available to them to discuss. Uh, I'm recording this on March 25th, and I have data up through March 24th. So I've put all that together in this table. There's February, March. You can see starting at 15, getting up to uh, on the 18th. You'll see these are the numbers in blue here that was used in the interview. And on the time I'm recording this, these are the numbers that I have available to me. So with that said, uh, before we crunch the numbers on that and do the math as been, we've been called to do, let me share with you what exponential growth looks like. I'm going to start by comparing it to linear growth. So here's linear growth. Let's say we start with one case of the coronavirus. And then the next day we add two cases for a total of three. And then we add two more for a total of five. And I just keep adding two cases each and every day. Then what you'll see is by adding two, we get what's called a linear progression because it's growing in what you can see looks like a straight line. And when I look at those numbers, I see that I'm adding two every single time, or basically any linear model is adding the same thing every time. So in this case, maybe I'm gaining two pounds every week. 
or it could be something like I earn twenty dollars an hour so after another hour I have twenty more dollars than I had before uh, if I'm driving 60 miles an hour to know my total distance after another hour I just add 60 to the total um, so if I'm adding each and every time I have what's called a linear progression but what happens with exponential exponential is when you multiply so and that's what's happening in the case of most infections is you start with one and then you have two people infected and then you have four people infected and so instead of adding two every time in this example I'm showing you I'm multiplying by two every time and what happens is it start it starts growing like crazy till you get this last one I did eight piles in the last example so now I have eight piles here look my little schema of green and red I had to go dive into another uh, color of poker chips and I had to go dive into a whole nother rack of them and I can't tell you how many times it took me to get that thing to stand without toppling so it you end up not with a linear progression but with what we call an exponential progression and this is what happens when you multiply each and every time so you end up with numbers like this where we start with one and we end up with instead of 15 128 and when you hear in the news about hey the virus uh, the number of cases is doubling say every three or four days uh, let's go every four days so start here and then four eight days 12 16 20 24 28 that means in the span of a month we would have gone from one case to 128 or from a thousand cases to 128,000 cases or from 1 million cases to 128 million cases so you can see when I compare this right up here to this linear model how much crazier this if we can just project out over a few more days you can see where we'd end up compared to this one would go right off my computer screen so um, so it's really powerful this whole idea of exponential growth so let's apply it now let's do the math so here's a very common exponential growth formula uh, this a stands for the amount so if we want to predict how much we would have how many cases we would have of the coronavirus we would start with the principal and so the amount that we have now and then we would multiply it by something in this exponent thus exponential growth is there because exponents mean we multiply repeatedly so if that's a two I multiply twice if that's a three I multiply this by itself three times if it's a, a whole month I might put 30 here and say I multiply by this 30 times and then that growth I'm going to multiply or that amount I'm going to multiply to my principal and it'll tell me what my amount is let me show you with some actual numbers it might make a bit more sense I'm going to choose some really simple ones I'm going to round everything off for the sake of our first example so I'm going to take our 9,000 cases round it off to 10,000 they said at the beginning of the month there were around 100 cases great I like all these zeros they're easy to deal with um, I'm going to take this out to a whole month month of March 31 days starting from the first day so on the first day I had 100 and if on the 31st day I had 10,000 that means I would have multiplied this 30 times and going from 100 to 10,000 that means I would have a hundred times more cases and so now this step is figuring out what I'm multiplying by every time well I'm going to multiply it 30 times so really the question is what is the 30th root of 100 in other words what did I multiply 30 times to get to 100 on a calculator I can punch that in and I did and I get this number and now I need to know my rate as a percentage so you see it's 1.1659 so this is a lot like money a dollar and 16 cents so if I take away the dollar portion then I end up and round off percent is like out of cents out of a dollar then this is actually 17 percent that's a 17 percent daily growth rate that is crazy so that means that in one imagine your 401k grows 17 percent in a year let alone a day or your boss gives you 17 percent raise or you gain 17 percent of your weight in a day that means a 200 pound person would gain 34 pounds the next day this is crazy growth is that truly the growth in what's happening because I just made up this example let's do it with the real data so here we have at the time of the interview it was uh, a little over 9,000 it started with 75 cases on March 1st but it didn't take the whole month remember it went from the 1st to the 18th of March 
So in 17 days, it grew 122 times. So that's 9,000 is 122 times greater than 75. I'm going to take the 17th root. What do I multiply by itself 17 times to get to 122? That would be 1.326. I subtract away the uh, subtract away the one, and I end up with and rounding off about 0.33, which is 33% daily growth rate. We thought 17% was high. We're talking double that. The actual growth rate of the virus is 33% per day. And so you can see why it's like two to three days it's doubling because 33% is about a third. It's not going to be exactly in three days exactly 100% because it's compounded. But you can see how in two or three days we're going to have twice as much as we had before. Um, no wonder this thing is spreading so fast. All right. So, but Chris, is it really that, you know, I don't, yes, I'm pretty confident it's that. But you know what? Math teachers always promote you to check your work. So let's do it. Uh, starting with those numbers on the 18th, I told you uh, I had data for the 24th, so I'm going to go from the 18th to the 24th at 33%. That's six days. That means we're going to have five times as many cases. That means on the 24th, we should have 50, about 51,000, and we ended up with 50, a little under 55. Not exactly, because this rate's not going to, the numbers aren't going to be exactly the same every single day. Um, but I'm saying, if anything, I'm undercutting it, uh, you know, so, uh, but I'm looking at that and saying, you know what, it looks like I'm pretty much on target. I'm somewhere in the low 50,000s. I can have confidence that this is going to at least give me a ballpark. So let's do that ballpark figure. Let's start with the current numbers on the 24th of March. Let's go for the last seven days in March and all 30 days in April because my school is shut down. My whole county is shut down until April 30th. So um, what if we grew at 33% for those next 37 days? I expect to have 38,000 times more and multiply that times the current one. And we end up with 2 billion people. That's ridiculous. There's only 330 million people in the United States. Um, so you can see there's some limitations to the model. Obviously, it's not going to keep growing forever because there's only so many people in the whole world. Um, but this tells us that we could definitely hit a large, if not all, of the population. We do know from the scientists not everybody's going to get sick because as people get healthy, they will stop spreading it. They won't catch it again. Um, and so let's listen to those scientists as to what they think are the possible outcomes. I've heard everything from uh, 20 to 70 percent initially. Now I'm hearing from 48 to 64 percent of the population will get it. I'm going to choose 50%, cut and round off the population to 300 million. So I can do this without a calculator and say that would be 150 million people that would get this virus. And if 20% of them, as they say, would need hospitalization, we would need 30 million hospital beds. The problem is we only have a million in this country and they're not all the coronavirus. People still have cancer, heart attacks, get in automobile accidents. So this is what we're concerned with is that we would overwhelm the medical system. And then you have the death rate. If it's 150 people at the time of the interview out of the 91, 97 that had it, then we have what we can call a 1.6% death rate. Um, yes, that's better than the rest of the world. We're the lowest of any country. Um, but if I were to round that down to 1% and multiply it to the number of people we suspect will get it, we're still talking one and a half million there you go, host of the interview. We just showed you the math. Uh, the doctor was correct. We could get north of a million people dying from this. Uh, the good news is we can take action against it, and that's why we are closing down everything to, um, as they say, flatten the curve and prevent these numbers from getting to their full potential. So with that said, I want to let everybody know this is a somber conversation. I'm sending out thoughts and prayers to all of you that are involved in those numbers that might have it or know of someone who does or that unfortunately may die from it. Um, but I do want to say that we're with you. I want to thank uh, Dr. Newsel and Dr. Pierce for inspiring this lesson. And most importantly, I want to thank all the medical personnel that are on the front lines fighting this battle for all of us. So this is Chris Shore saying to everybody, Stay healthy, stay well, stay safe.